We think we know everything about the Burgundy region and its heritage. Its bright abbeys, its art of living, its prestigious wines. But it is also brimming with less known treasures of the palate. In the village of Flavigny, a strange scent has hung in the air for centuries. It's in these vats that they make one of the oldest sweets in France, the Anis de Flavigny. From the aniseed to the final sweet, it takes two weeks. We coat the sweets with a little more syrup every day, so we turn them to give an even coating and then leave them to dry. But how did aniseed, a Mediterranean spice, find its way into deepest Burgundy? Factory boss Catherine Troubat tells us about the origins of the sweet made in this former abbey. The Romans made their way north through France, bringing their spices with them, including aniseed. Then when the monks arrived, they had the idea of coating the tiny aniseeds with sugar syrup to make hard sweets. For more than a hundred years, Catherine's family has kept alive the history, which is inseparable from the name of Flavigny, and this little oval tin. And in respect of tradition, only local people are hired to condition the sweets. We used to have summer holiday jobs here when we were school kids, because Catherine and her father before her preferred to take on people from the village. So we worked here during the school holidays, and we stayed. My grandparents used to eat a lot of aniseed, and it was them who made me want to work here following in the footsteps of a number of family members. My youngest kid's only a year old, and he really loves the smallest ones we make. Flavored with rose, mint or violet, the Anis de Flavigny continues to win over new aficionados. The small oval boxes are even exported across Europe and to Japan and the United States. In Dijon, the capital of Burgundy, they also like aniseed, but more particularly in their gingerbread. In this shop, one of the oldest in the city, they keep alive the legendary nonette, a cake that has been melting the mouths of Dijonais since the Middle Ages. I love nonettes, especially the nonette with a marmalade, apricot, or raspberry jam filling. They're my favorites. They're small, round gingerbreads generally filled with jam. Grandchildren now come to the shop where their grandmas bought their nonettes. They've been making nonettes here for 225 years. It's a family heritage, that of Catherine Petitjean, the ninth generation to run the company. This is Auguste Petitjean, who was the director of Mulot and Petitjean. He built the site that we're still on today. It was 25 years ago that her father left her the keys to the house. What really buoyed me was his trust. I think that your parents' trust is crucial. And he handed me the reins of the company and let me make my own decisions. And now I'm preparing to hand over to my daughter. A delicious tradition, originally passed on by nuns who were the first to make them and give them the name Nonette. As for baker Emmanuel Logereau, he has taken a vow of silence regarding the recipe. Here we have 146 kilos. But he does insist on one thing. Everything is handmade. Shaped by hand, dressed by hand, baked by hand, Iced by hand, baking with the old ovens is fantastic. A local pride that stretches well beyond Burgundy. This young employee is from Lyon and has worked here for three years. Gingerbread is his Proust's Madeleine. 
Since I was a kid, nonettes, ice fingers, six kilo slabs. They're all good. They're so fond of gingerbread in the region that they even tried marrying it with another local star, mustard. Is it a tricky balance, marrying mustard and gingerbread? We did quite a few trials before finding the perfect marriage. The recipe isn't as new as that. It already featured in the recipe books of renowned Burgundy mustard maker Edmond Fallot. A century later, his grandson is bringing it back to life. It has, I'd say, a color bordering on gold, on amber. The two ingredients go together extremely well. Burgundy knows how to renew its gastronomic heritage while keeping alive its traditions. There's no danger that the region will lose its refined sense of taste anytime soon.